Hello team, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are in chapter 4 and recently we just completed the first topic of the, this chapter where we just understood about the various categories what we'll be covering here. And uh, in this tutorial we are just getting started with the another first topic of the categories that is black box testing techniques. We have five techniques to undergo in this particular section and I'll be creating it independently separate tutorials on each of the techniques so that it is helpful for every individual to just uniquely understand each of them. So getting started with the very first technique in the black box testing techniques that is equivalence partition. Equivalence partition is generally a technique which was uh, used for the ranges which deals with the uh, uh, having multiple categories within the scenario. So generally when we have multiple ranges, mathematical ranges involved in any particular scenario, we make use of equivalence partition. But at the same time, we do not mean that it is not limited to the multiple ranges. Sometimes it can also be used even on single range partition or may have three or four ranges or maybe multiple of them. It can be multi-layered also which you can understand in advanced level. So let's not talk about it in more detail here. It's limited to understanding the multiple categories, multiple equivalence classes which can be created in the scenario where we have different set of group of options or set, set of people which can fall into different categories and we define minimum number of test cases to cover that scenario. So usually uh, equivalence partition is a technique which divides a scenario into equivalence partitions or partitions are also known as ranges or classes and we say that where all the elements of a particular class are expected to behave the same and because of just that particular entity or the definition we say that as per EP we take only one test from each range. So generally say for example these are my three ranges as per any scenario. We will just take one test from each class or partition that is to just make sure that it is uh, having all, all the elements of a particular class will behave the same. So of course we do not have to really test all the values within that range. And anyways fulfilling the principle too uh, which we understood in chapter 1 that exhaustive testing is impossible and of course you cannot try with if impossible te uh, like exhaustive testing here. So we do not try with all the values. If you have tested these three values it satisfies that the entire scenario will work fine. Let's look, quickly look into uh, one of the example here and understand how exactly that works in the scenario execution or applying the technique. An integer field shall contain values between and including 1 to 15. Remember team ISTQB will try to make it as easy and simple for you to understand the question clearly so that you have a clarity on giving the right answer. By applying equivalence partition, what's the minimum number of test cases required for maximum coverage? Whenever given a situation to you, whenever given a scenario to you, all you have to do is take your pen and paper and draw a quick table which hardly takes few seconds but you have a clarity that what we are talking about and what would be the ranges. So it comes something like this you will be having three ranges to be considered that is less than 1, 1 to 15 and 16 or greater as the third range. Now as per EP as we take 1, 2, 3 we will be having three tests to cover this entire scenario. So we always try with the minimum number of test cases to cover the same. Where we mean to say that these values can be any value within their respective range. And if we had just tested these three values, it can satisfy the criteria that all the ranges will be working fine within their values as well. Let's take another value to another scenario to understand the same thing. Sometimes they do not ask you always minimum number of test cases or maybe the count of test cases. Sometimes they can ask you the ranges which would be created. So we need to know that what are the different possibilities, what generally an examination can ask you. So here the same scenario but we are looking at the different question like an integer field shall contain values between and including 1 to 15. By applying EP which of the following is a valid collection of equivalence classes for the given scenario. Now team, when we say valid collection of equivalence classes, it doesn't mean that we are only looking for a valid partitions or valid classes. Valid collection means we want to know what would be the possible ranges which will be created to test this scenario. So here, let's try with and see how exactly the answer would be. 
<coughs> so these are our ranges which remains the same from the previous example that we have one range uh, which is less than 1 being invalid 1 to 15 all the elements are valid and the other class which is 16 or greater than that which is invalid where of course uh, the ranges what we have created we know so we will be having three tests anyways which you know from the previous example but the question here is not about number of test cases they want to know what is the test case oh sorry what are the ranges so of course we have the very first one giving you the right answer subject to, you can just quickly create a table and write these details on the table it will be helpful for you to derive the right answer from the situation or the options given to you there's another example to understand in more detail about equivalence partition I have taken a little tricky example here where the mathematical terms are really important to be understood the moment you go wrong with less than or less than equal to or greater than greater than equal to between or next these are the words which will be used by ISTQB to create diversions and all you have to do is pay attention and get the right answer in a system designed to work out the tax to be paid, an employee has uh, 4,000 of salary tax free. The next 1,500 is taxed at 10%. The next 28,000 is taxed at 22%. Any further amount is taxed at 40%. Which of these group of numbers would fall into the same class? So, SCQB has different possibilities to ask you the same thing in different manners. So, now this time they want you to answer. Uh, that which option would fall under the same class and for that creating the class we need to just understand the scenario first now when we use the word next it generally means that you add it to the previous value so let's start creating the classes here the very first range will be one to four thousand because salary obviously cannot be considered as zero or you can say that four thousand or less than that but let's me let's be more precise that we're talking from one to four thousand is tax-free the next is 4,001 to 5,500, which simply means that the next 1,500 is added to the previous ending value. So 4,001 to 5,500, that is by adding 1,500 to 4,000. The next one is the next 28,000, that means you add it to the previous value again, not to the initial value. So 5,500 plus 28,000, you will have 33,500. So the third range is 5,501 to 33,500 and then 33,501 and greater. So once you're done with this, you're almost done with your solution and all you need to do is pick up each option one after the other and start placing them in this table. The one which falls under the same class will be your answer. And let's try the direct answer here D which says that uh, it's a... Five, eight. Anyways, as per the EP, you will be having four test cases, but let's look at the option. Uh, last option here, it is uh, 5,800, which is in the third class. 28,000, third class. 32,000, third class. That means the last option is your right answer. So this is from the equivalence partition understanding team. In case you have any problem with understanding any other question or any other sample question across the internet or any source you are free to let me know that so that i can help you with any justification or explanation required for the right answer so at any point of time if you're practicing you're exploring more about the techniques feel free to reach me and comment below in the video so that i can really help you to make it more better for you so just keep exploring keep learning about these techniques and try to attempt as many sample questions as possible and you need help i'm always there thanks for watching the video team happy learning